Hey there, welcome to Broadcast to Post. I'm Jeff Sengfield, CTO at Keycode Media. This is the show where we interview leaders and experts in the AV, broadcast, and post production spaces. We're giving you the inside tips to grow your media workflows and business today. Cloud storage for post production? the on-prem to cloud storage transition for post. One of the most fascinating areas of technology over the past few years has been cloud technology's advancement into post-production. When production teams, editors, colorists, producers all had to start working from home, creative facilities had to rethink the fundamentals of operating a post-production infrastructure. All sorts of solutions solved parts of the puzzle for remote work back in 2020. But now that the dust has begun to settle, our industry is starting to evaluate their entire post-production ecosystem and begin to determine what makes sense to lift and shift into the cloud or what incremental steps can be taken to transition everything to the cloud. Today, we're joined by Mark Stalnitz from the Cloud Storage M&E team from Wasabi. Mark, let's start with introductions. Tell me a little bit about yourself, your career in M&E, post-production, and wonderful stuff of technology. How did we get here? Uh, it's a long and winding road. Um, I go back to, uh, I'm afraid to say, the late 80s. All along, um, always been fascinated with the process and how to do things and how to do it better. And, and, and along the way, looking for tools to help me do that. Um, so th the most recent stop of my career prior to Wasabi was at uh, Hallmark Media. It's now known as Hallmark Media. Um, when I joined, it wasn't even anything. It was a little channel called Odyssey. And um, I was hired as like the fourth employee to build the in-house post-production. And uh, I was new to LA at the point. I didn't know too many people. Somebody told me to call Mike Cavanaugh. So... I called up Mike Cavanaugh, and this was before Key Code, and um, and his team, and he um, helped me get a full-on in-house post facility up and running in about four months, financed on his gold card, um, <laughs> uh, to the tune of, I think, $1.8 million. And uh, I think when it was all said and done, I mean, there's a full um, central engineering room, when it was all said and done, only one cable had to be rerun. So it was a really impressive effort. So, you know, I've always been fond of uh, Key Code and, you know, we worked with them over the years as well. So, you know, we, we've come through the good old days and now today we've got a lot of changes in how workflow works in post-production and just in general of all of production. So let's keep in mind that we've got everybody from small to large post-production operations who are going to be watching this with us. So what do small teams need to consider when it comes to selecting cloud storage? Well, I, I think regardless of the size, um, you've got to be thinking about price, the total cost of ownership, um, not just the window sticker, but the overall cost. Um, you got to worry about security, ease of use, you know, does it fit your use case? Um, you know, does it fit your workflows? Um, certainly got to be considering your bandwidth, your connectivity, file sizes, volumes, where your workers are located. Um, smaller teams, I would think you've really got to be concerned with, um, you might be more concerned with getting in and out of long-term contracts, not wanting to be in any. Um, large organizations, which I'm sure we're going to talk about as well, you're probably going to be more concerned with ideas like ransomware attacks, um, having copies in multiple locations, having a geodiverse work group. Um, but you know, a small group could be geodiverse too. It could just be three people spread across the country. That, that makes sense. Um, yeah. so when you do get into the larger teams, are there other considerations, um, other than, you know, Bigger organization, bigger target on the back for the ransomware peeps. Um, or are there other things that people should be looking at when it terms when in terms of thinking about their you know basically movement to the cloud? I would always focus on um, data organization, um, making using naming conventions, um, looking out for things like um, illegal characters and file names because. You know, lots of um, data movement tools will move your files, but if you've got an illegal character, S3 is not going to like that and, you know, could mess up your transfer. Um, certainly a large organization, if you've got to go to a CTO and talk about price, um, 
you're going to really want to understand what that bill is going to look like at the end of the month. And, you know, with Wasabi, it's very predictable because we don't charge for egress or API calls. And, you know, and, and I've been in that position having to go into the boss at the end of the month and say, well, here's a bill, but I don't know where these lines came from, or there was no way to predict that, or, you know, these are the lessons that uh, are being learned a lot right now. Yeah, I've been there and done that. People asking me yeah. why why is your MX just so crazy this month? Um, and that that's I think one of the ways that we can help folks transition to the cloud. Um, we know a lot of what people should do, and then the more important thing: what are the other things that people should not do when they're looking to transfer from on prem to cloud? And and I would say that one of those things is you don't just have the conversation with the CTO. You need to have a conversation also with the finance people, the CFO. Yeah, and, and that was who my boss was <laughs> was the CFO. So absolutely, it you know you, you need to take a look at your um, total cost of ownership over time. Um, I mean, on prem uh, has been rock solid for years, but so is the cloud now. Um, you got to look at you factoring your bandwidth costs. Um, certainly for your total cost of ownership. And I think one of the other things to look at with the total cost of ownership is also where that fits in terms of the uh, the tax repercussions. If you are, you know, certain clients of ours, houses of worship, schools, Ooh. don't have to worry about that. But people who are, you know, in, in standard commercial businesses – Tax ramifications are important considerations to, to to think about. And that's where those discussions, I think, with the CFO makes sense. Right. And I would also say um, critical to all of this, you know, your clients doing their explorations, it is um, imperative that they partner with a quality, you know, systems integrator. Wasabi is doing cloud storage. We are just cloud storage and we're proud of that. We do it well. Our trick to you know, our real key to success is partnerships, not just, <clears throat> but especially with people like Geekcode in terms of understanding your clients and where we fit into the overall picture. So, what should any entity do, you know, to to guarantee their success moving to the cloud? It's to work with a partner that understands your use case and designs that workflow and holds your hand through the process. And and most critically, I would say, proof of concept. And and one of the beauties with cloud is. And certainly with Wasabi is it's very easy to test. Um, you can go on the website in a minute and have yourself a functioning S3 based um, cloud storage account for a terabyte that, you know, you can bring all your other tools to connect to it, test it, kick the tires. You want to dial that up. I can dial that up. You know, as big as a proof of concept you want to do, we can we can work with you to do. And you know, without anything having to be, you know, packed up and shipped to you, put in a rack, it's, it's instant. So proof yep. of concepts, everything. Very, very easy to uh, spin that out there. Um, so do you have any customer examples of folks who have gotten into um, a Wasabi based solution and how this has benefited them in their post-production workflows? Any stories? Uh, any stories we can share? Basically, we have a uh, really strong partnership with uh, Legendary Entertainment. Um, they've used us for many things along the way. Um, they were using us for um, remote editorial workflow um, during the pandemic, um, in in cooperation with uh, LucidLink. So, um, in, in terms of managing the file uh, system remotely, uh, they also use us for archive. Um, there's other companies. Um, VDMS has a uh, digital asset management system called Vita. Um, it's like, a, I think it's like an asset management system on demand. And we are their back end hosting their uh, their asset management, their, their, the assets for their asset management system. And, and that's one of the interesting things we've always had in discussions with folks that do cloud workflows is... Wasabi is one piece of that puzzle, but you need the whole picture. And that, right. that's the wonderful thing. You you link to all those other manufacturers out there. Like you said, you're the back end for this particular uh, workflow. That's the piece that's that's very interesting out there because no one just simply 
gets storage and does nothing with it or just puts stuff out there and lets it sit. Right. Always going to be an integration with folks. And and you'd mentioned uh, you'd mentioned Lucid and, uh, you know, a couple other folks that are out there. So before you had mentioned S3, and uh, for those that don't know, that's what Amazon calls simple storage service, S3. That's where it came from. <clears throat> yeah. In mentioning our friends at AWS, <clears throat> how do you how does Wasabi differentiate from the AWS and Azure's and Google's in, that are living in this space today? Most importantly, um, price and simplicity. Um, like I mentioned before, um, we are, I didn't mention before, but $5.99 per terabyte per month. Um, it's up to 80% less than Amazon. So on a price point level, we got them beat. And then you talk about something that you know is easily overlooked but is so important is the predictability of that pricing which is that we don't charge for egress we don't charge for api calls and those are those little nagging onesie twosie pennies that you know per transaction you don't even know are going on in the background that pile up and before you know it it's dollars tens of dollars hundreds of dollars that you know you probably didn't budget for so we don't charge for that we're strictly charging for the storage um we pride ourselves on simplicity it's one tier it's always hot it's always there for you um, when you need it um, data is safe with 11 nines of data durability um, and, and again critically it, it's about our partnerships that even especially with ME, we have so many um technically allied partners across asset management transcode delivery acceleration um remote file systems i mean you name it and we're just, and it's simple because we're just based on the Amazon's S3 protocols. We didn't do anything different with them. So if there's a tool set out there that, you know, you work with, that you want to keep working with, odds are we already work with them or we can work with them very simply. And the, the wonderful thing about a, an S3 location is it, it it's kind of like a zip code. If you put a different one in, it just goes somewhere else and talks yeah. to that area instead of the one you, you think it was talking to. So, in so many products, we are really just a pull down choice in a menu. Definitely. And and just being able to plug those those values in and off you go. That's that's what I think is one of the, the beautiful things about moving into the cloud. It's once you decide you're going to do it, it's pretty pretty easy to get there and and scale yeah. is not a problem um you know if i need to scale on prem storage if you got 100 terabytes and you suddenly need 500 i need to come in and look at your power look at your cooling and look at your network connectivity right. and add all this other stuff and and if you need it in, in wasabi guess what just put it there <laughs> that's all you need to yeah. do put it up You're there never, ready, ready to never go never going to run out of space exactly and that that's one of those beautiful things uh because uh it's very few people that I've run into who say, you know what? I just have too much storage space. I, I just don't need all this, this space. Not, not, not usually going to happen. So Mark, if you were going to come up with a tagline for what you would think people really need to take away about Wasabi storage, what would that be? Well, I, I remember the old adage in the industry is like, you can have it good, fast or cheap, you know, pick two. Well, I like to think with Wasabi, you can have all three. Ooh, uh, I like that. I'd like all three, please. You can have them. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Mark, thanks for taking the time to talk with us here today. If you've got questions about getting into cloud storage with our friends at Wasabi, please reach out to us here at KeyCode. And for KeyCode Media, I'm Jeff Sangpeel. Well, thanks for having me, Jeff. Thanks for watching Broadcast to Post. Please make sure to subscribe to the podcast to receive future episodes. Follow Keycode Media on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram to receive news on additional AV, broadcast, and post-production technology content. See you next time, folks.